Hey there, it's Nick from Grayscale Gorilla, and welcome to Getting Started with Grayscale Gorilla Studio. Grayscale Gorilla Studio makes it even easier to use the Grayscale Gorilla library by putting it right on your desktop and making it more compatible wherever you do 3D, including Cinema 4D, Houdini, Unreal Engine, and Blender. So let's just jump right on in and let me show you how Studio works, how to get up and running with it. And if you're not a Plus member, download the free version and you can follow along as well. Now I'll be using the Windows version here, but we also have a Mac version if you need it. Once you have it installed, you can sign in using your Grayscale Gorilla login. And for you Plus members, you'll have access to the entire library. And we also have a free account, so you could sign in using a free Grayscale Gorilla account and get some of the basic assets inside. Let's go ahead and sign on in. All right, welcome to Grayscale Gorilla Studio. Here it is. The default page is gonna be this new page where you see all the new stuff that's inside of Plus. And we're always dropping new stuff all the time. If this is your first time using Grayscale Gorilla Studio, it may have popped open this settings dialog and asked you where you wanna put all of your assets. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're using a brand new folder for this. If you've been a Plus member in the past and have downloaded stuff using the Grayscale Gorilla Hub, those materials are not compatible with Grayscale Gorilla Studio. All right, next you can select your 3D application, including Cinema 4D, Blender, Houdini, and Unreal Engine. We're gonna be using Cinema 4D today, so I'll leave that selected. All right, let's talk about the last couple settings, including Renderer Automatic. You're gonna to wanna to mostly leave this alone. Grayscale Gorilla Studio and the connector plugins that we'll talk about in just a second are super smart in making sure that any of the assets that you send to any of those 3D apps are compatible with the renderer that you're using. So for the most part, you can just leave this alone and leave it on automatic. And finally, make sure you download and install the connector plugin for any 3D apps that you're using with Studio. You can click here to get the latest plugins for Cinema 4D, Blender, Houdini, and Unreal Engine. All right, let's get out of the settings. Setting stuff up isn't the fun part, but you know, we gotta do it, folks. All right, we're back in the main page of Grayscale Gorilla Studio, and you can see on the left here, we have some different tabs. Now, one of the big reasons we made Grayscale Gorilla Studio is to be more compatible in more 3D apps, but we also wanted to make it easier for you to search and find the asset you're looking for when you need it. Speed up the entire workflow so that you can get back to work and start making your 3D render. Now, there's some brand new ways to search and find and look for your new favorite assets to use in your projects. First of all, we made search way quicker. So, of course, you could just search for anything you're looking for, hit enter, and boom, it's gonna show you all the assets that have that tagged ready to go. Look at all these fabrics. You wanna find something else? Cool, let's try searching for only the red stuff, and here it is. You need something red? Well, we got it, folks. You can see we also have HDRIs blended in here with the materials. So again, anything tagged will show there, uh, but if you're only looking for something specific, you can actually come up here and filter. So you can filter by type. Let's say you're looking only for red HDRIs, you could do that. Or if you're only looking for red materials, you could do that there. Of course, you can undo that and uh, go back to all types to see them all. You can also sort by newest or alphabetical. Another thing new inside of Grayscale Gorilla Studio is the ability to add favorites. So if you're ever scrolling and you see something that maybe you wanna use later or for this project, you can just click the little heart icon right here and it'll show up in your favorites tab. To see all your favorites, just click over here in favorites and you can see them all right there. I already have quite a few selected. You can put models and materials and HDRIs at all filters inside of favorites. And then you could also filter inside of favorites as well. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get a material inside of Cinema 4D. I'm gonna go up to new and let's check out one of the new collections like this colorful abstract materials. Now in Studio, you don't have to download an entire collection to use it in your project. You can just download the ones you wanna use. Let's grab this one and this blue one. You can see I also already have some of them downloaded. You'll see that they have a checkbox and a little green arrow ready to go. Any that don't have the checkbox, you can just click the green arrow and it's downloading. You can also click and see bigger previews and all the maps included in this asset. If you decide you wanna download it, you could also download right inside this dialog. Now that we have some assets downloaded, let's bring them into Cinema 4D. Down here in the left, you're gonna see that Cinema 4D is disconnected. Now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are connected to the apps that you are sending materials and models to. By now, you should have your connector plugins installed, and once you do, all you have to do is click connect. Grayscale Gorilla Studio will then connect directly with Cinema 4D, and any of the models or materials that you wanna bring into Cinema 4D are literally a click away. 
All right, now that we're connected, you get to hover over any asset that you have downloaded and you'll see a green arrow. Go ahead and click send and Grayscale Gorilla Studio will automatically send it into the 3D app that you're connected to. Of course, we're connected to Cinema 4D and we have Redshift running. So it automatically made a Redshift material and it put it in our material library right here, ready to go. Of course, from here, all we need to do is drag and drop it onto whatever we wanna have that material and we are set to go. If that one's not working for you, it's as easy as going back to studio, sending a few more assets, heading into cinema, dragging and dropping them right on your object and getting a brand new look. Ooh, I like that one. Now this new workflow is also set up to use the new node system. So if you ever wanna customize your materials, you're now in the new system ready to go. And this is true no matter what 3D app you're using, we wanted to make it extra easy to customize these materials to your heart's content. Just open up the material and dig in. You can even see that many of our materials have displacement turned on and ready to go, which means you get even more realistic materials. Now this one has displacement, but it's not made to look super realistic. So let's go ahead into my favorites and grab something with displacement that might look a little bit more real. So here's the clay rough material. I'm gonna go ahead and send that in. It is in and I'm gonna drag and drop. It's super fast to use. And you'll see with this one, you get all the beautiful scratches and details right inside of your object using this material. Now we have tutorials to show you how to add displacement and different renderers. Redshift's pretty straightforward. We have these tags. And in fact, we could turn this effect way up or we could tone it down for a more subtle look. So that's materials. What about importing models? Well, let's head on over and let's search in a different way, which is under categories. We could search for models and we can go into these categories like abstract for the doodads. We have all these broadcasts, all this stuff. All right, let's grab one of these doodads. You can see, you could search by collection. By the way, you could also search up here and it works the same. If you're looking for anything specific, just type it in and it'll filter. You can see in this doodads collection, I have some of them downloaded. If I wanna try any of them, of course, it works the same way. I can download very quickly and I could just send it directly into my application. I wanna grab this one here, this array 13. I'm gonna click send and it's automatically gonna go in my scene right inside of my objects manager. Let me hide my little shader ball for a moment and let's go ahead and grab our doodad and we're gonna scale it up and we're gonna use the place tool, just put it right in the middle here and scale it up and rotate it. Oh, lovely. Of course, from here, you could go ahead and drag and drop any of the materials we have imported or you could head on back to studio and send a few more and try them out until you get the look you're going for. All right, so now you know how to import materials and models. What about other things like HDRIs and gobos and area light maps and all that stuff? Well, we made that super easy as well. Let's head on back into Studio and let me show you. In Studio, we can go into our HDRIs and see all of them here. Or of course, we can also filter by HDRI and just search for what we want. I'm gonna do that. All right, let's go ahead and search for everyone's favorite, Creative Office. All right, a few of them pop up, but there's one and only one creative office, my friends. And it's a banger for a reason, it always looks great. Now, I already have it downloaded, but if you don't have it downloaded, of course, you could just click the download button and it'll download. Once it's downloaded, you have two options. One is called copy and paste, also called copy path. By clicking this button, you're putting the path of that file that is now on your hard drive into your clipboard. So just click it, you'll see it turns into a checkbox. So what can you do now that you have that in your clipboard? Well, you simply can go back to your 3D application and this works in any 3D application, literally any 3D application. All you have to do is go to your file path, delete what's there and just paste the new one. I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut command B to paste and bam, it is in my scene, it's that quick. Now I'm gonna turn off my extra lighting here that I had in the other scene, just so we could see this HDRI all on its own. And of course, from here, we can dial it in and turn up and down the brightness and of course, go and rotate it around. Look at that. I love Creative Office. So we see that Copy Path works. What's the other way to use it? Well, let's say we wanna try uh, this one here, Office 2. Instead of copy and paste, you can also just drag it into where you use it. So here's the path again. You could just click on this thumbnail. Let's go ahead and click and drag and now you'll see a little Grayscale Gorilla logo where your cursor is. I still have my uh, button clicked. And all you have to do is put your mouse over where you want it and let go. 
This will do more than just copy the path. It will say, hey, do you actually want to bring this file into your project? And it'll ask you, you can say no and it'll still work. But if you click yes, it will go ahead and add it into your texture folder directly. You also saw that it said it couldn't copy the texture. That's just because this is already in this project. Either way, just know that you could drag and drop or copy path and it works the same way super fast in any application. Of course, I can't let this go without rotating it because it didn't look great all the way behind. So let's set the light off to the right on this one. Oh baby, there we go. This workflow also works for bokeh and textures and also even gobos. Let me show you gobos. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our gobo lighting and the default gobo lighting here in the scene file just has these stripes, but what if we wanna change it? Well, let's go into our gobo light and go to object and wherever you're using gobos, you'll see a texture path. And this is again, where all you have to do is go to studio. And in this case, we could just type in gobo. Now it says no results and that's because we're filtering by each your eyes. We can just simply go back to all types and see everything. Here we got all of our abstract and windows and caustics and all these awesome gobos. Which one do we want? Let's go ahead and grab one of these windows. Uh, let's go ahead and download a fresh one. And we could do it either way. We could drag and drop. Let's go ahead and do that. Let go. Do you wanna put it in your search path? Yes and it will automatically update right here inside of your scene file. And it's that fast. You wanna demo another one? Come on over here, let's do another one. Drag, drop, yes. Could not copy texture, it's already in the path. It will update anyway. Boom, a little bright on that one, but that's okay. Let's try one more, like these dappled caustics here. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag this in. It'll ask if it's part of the project, say yes. And bam, let's go ahead and uh, move our cone angle down a little bit get all this nice dappled lighting, looking good. All right, now finally, I wanna show you how easy it is to use surface imperfections inside of Grayscale Gorilla Studio. Now again, this works in any 3D application, the drag and drop just works, uh, but I'm gonna be doing this here in Redshift. So I have a new Redshift material, and uh, first thing is first here, folks, we gotta make this thing a little bit reddish orange. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, now. Of course, I wanna break up these reflections, add a little bump, maybe even some displacement, and I could do all of that really quickly using Grayscale Gorilla Studio. So let's open it up and let's find some surface imperfections. Now you can go to categories and come down here and inside of textures, you'll find surface imperfections. And here there's tons of different maps to help you add crust and scratches and dust and all these things. I'm gonna use it to make a little bit of like grungy, uh, material. So I'm just going to type in grunge and there's a ton of these. Um, let's find one like this kind of scale. So I'm clicking on it to see a larger preview. And this one has all these nice little hand prints and thumb prints and stuff in it. I love this one. So from here, all we need to do is drag and drop it into our little node area and it will ask us, Hey, do you want it to be in the path of the uh, scene file or if we hit no, it'll just stay in the uh, Grayscale Gorilla Studio library and it'll do it from there. So whatever way you wanna work, you either say yes and it'll go into your scene, or if you say no, it'll just stay where it is uh, inside of Studio. Either way, it is now a material as a node just by dragging and dropping, which means we could really quickly just pump this into roughness and you'll be able to see it really quickly here in the preview. So now we have all these nice little smudges and thumbprints and uh, you could even scale it right from here. I'm gonna say uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, just to make those uh, marks a little bit larger. Now, we can also add this grunge to a bump map. So I'll just come up here, hit C, and type in bump. And what I'm looking for is a bump map. I would just drag it out of there. And now I could take this same map, plug it into bump map, and then plug it into bump map. And you can see it takes that same grunge material and adds a ton of bump to it. Uh, now that's way too much. So I'm gonna come in here to height scale and knock it down quite a lot. I'm gonna go to uh, 0.1 and that looks really nice. A little bit more might show up better on camera. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna split the difference, 0.15. All right, so there's bump and uh, roughness. Of course, you could put ramps in here to dial this up and down, but we have other tutorials on that. All right, now let's add some displacement. So first thing we need is the displacement node. I'm just gonna type displacement and drag it out. And of course, now we need a surface imperfection to tell the material how to displace. And again, we have longer tutorials on this, but I wanted to show you the quick setup. Uh, 
let's go find one of those patterns and and kind of punch it into this material. So let's go back to Grayscale Gorilla Studio and you'll see right here we have patterns. And in fact, if you ever wanna see a full collection, all you have to do is open up any material anywhere inside the library and you'll see what collection it is related to. So if you're like, wow, I wanna see more of those, you can just click on right there, Patterns MSMC, and it'll take you to that collection and show you all of the materials or all of the HDRIs that are in the same collection. So here are the patterns. I use these all the time. Um, and they are these awesome retro looking patterns. And you could just, again, just drag and drop any of them in uh, once you have them downloaded. And it'll ask you if you want it in the search path. I'll say no this time, just leave it where it is. And I'm gonna pump this into a displacement and then I'm gonna pump it into the output under displacement and it will automatically add displacement to our um, material. Now you can see it took the shapes and it punched it out into, um, uh, into space. I want the opposite. So I'm actually gonna come into our displacement node here and just set the scale to negative one. And now it'll punch in and make little holes wherever uh, the, the pattern is showing. And again, we can scale this down and make something a little bit smaller just by going in here and saying, okay, let's say two, make a smaller pattern and you'll see it right away in the viewport. Beautiful. We could even take this and pump it into our color channel. And now this will drive our color channel. Of course, by default, it's black and white. But if we want to grab a ramp, we could just drag it right on the node to kind of interrupt that signal and say, no, I don't want black and white. I actually want uh, this orange that we had on the main side of things. And uh, we can make the other one black or we can make the other one a different color, however we wanna do it. And just like that, we have a customized material that we have control over that have infinite amount of options because you could drag any of those surface imperfections inside of here and add them directly into your material. And by the way, a little secret tip, if you like one of the bump or displacement patterns from any of our other materials, you can just open those up, go find where the bump map is. You could just copy and paste it into your material and get exactly that bump in any material that you're working on. Mixing and matching gives you millions, maybe billions, let's do the math, <laughs> of options when it comes to customizing your materials. Thanks again for watching everybody. And if you have a question about Grace Gorilla Studio that I didn't answer, throw it down in the comments. I read every comment and I'll make sure to answer it. We are just getting started with Studio and we're constantly adding new stuff. Thanks again for watching everybody. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye everybody.